let's talk. So by the time you see this, I will no longer be a herald. Oh, well, anyway, I won't be a heraldic officer for my barony. Um, I just received word the other day that uh, my successor has been named um, and at the next populist meeting, which uh, has of this recording is tomorrow for me, um, we will do the formal changeover and uh, my deputy will become the new herald for the barony of Beesenfoyer. Not quite two years, that's actually I believe a month early, so 23 months as a local herald. And I just want to say, I want to take a minute and just let you all know that this has been the ride of a lifetime, but it's also been such an adventure. This is the first time, despite the fact I've been playing for 26 years, this is the first time I've ever been able to be a local herald for a group. Um, and it brought with it its share of challenges, it brought with it uh, a lot of learning experiences for me, but it also brought with it some amazing opportunities. Um, I've had a chance to be the personal herald for uh, landed nobles. I've never had that opportunity before. It was an amazing opportunity. Uh, Eye-opening opportunity. Um, I was brought into some high-level conversations that Previously, I, I would never have even fathomed being part of, and yet I was in on the ground floor, so to speak, for a number of conversations. I was privy to information before a lot of other people, before almost anyone outside of the, the baronial household, frankly. Um, it was one of the first times where I really had an opportunity to work with deputies under me. Um, I've, I've nominally had deputies in other offices, but this was a truly unique take on that. This was the first time I had deputies who were in the same zip code as me, were, um, were you know, had face-to-face -face interactions with me on a weekly or so basis. I mean, we're talking about a very different set of circumstances than any previous offices I have ever held. Um, and being a local herald has taught me so much about how to lead and how to guide and how to educate individuals. It, it's been um, quite the journey, I will tell you. I have absolutely discovered uh, more weaknesses about myself. There are things I am not good at. I sort of knew that going in. I now know it for damn sure now. Uh, but I also have discovered some new strengths. Um, I have, uh, being in this office, has taught me that skills I wasn't sure were polished are in fact a lot more polished than I gave them credit for. Let's see, I've had a chance to herald now for, God, four events, I believe, five events, including, including heralding next to the, uh, uh, the, Vindhame Principality Herald, who that, you know, that actually two different heralds, those were always amazing adventures. Um, getting a chance to work next to a sealder is always a trip. She is this little bundle of energy. I say little. She is this bundle of energy that is barely contained. And uh, getting a chance to herald next to Orlando Giovanni um, was, uh, that's an experience. Um, he's an amazing individual, and I, I learned a huge amount. As much as I, in one of my previous videos, I talked about uh, blowing a little bit of smack his way when I was heralding next to him. Um, I, I learned so much uh, watching him herald, and I really enjoyed that. I got a chance to run my own event. Um, we ran the uh, Herald's Professional Development Retreat, which... Uh, that's that's an event I designed uh, uh, several years ago, and I ran it once, hosted ironically by this group before I even moved here, and then uh, we ran it again this year, and that was my pet project, and I ran it, and oh my god, I could write books. I probably will wind up writing books about all the things I learned running that event. And then tomorrow, 
I get to hand it all over. I get to, uh, I'll probably get on the call later that night and um, hand over the email and uh, do all of the changing of the guard, to use the phrase. And if I could do more of it, would I? And the answer is no. <laughs> I knew when I signed up for this that I had two years. And I knew that those two years were going to burn me out. I was going to come out the other end of this pretty crispy. And I am. I'm, I'm, I'm not good for officership for a while. You will not see me signing up to be an officer. I need some time to myself. I need to work on some projects. I need to work on other aspects of my life. Um, but that was all baked into it. I knew the moment they asked me to sign up that I was going to last 24 months and then I need a break. And I've done 23 months and I need a break. Um, but if I had to do over again, would I think twice about it? No. This was exactly where I needed to be. This was exactly what I needed. And in terms of what I got out of it versus what I put into it, um, I'm coming out on top. I Right now, I am coming out of this better than I went in. I have learned more and gained more than I lost in the process. But part of that balance is understanding where the tipping point is. And the tipping point is two years. If I were to stay in any longer, um, this would this would cease being a hobby and this would become a chore. And I, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that to myself. I don't want to do that to my barony. And last but not least, I think if there is one thing I need to call out more than anything else about this role as being the Baronial Herald, it is the relationships that I have built. Um, I have had a chance to be counsel, confidant, and herald to two absolutely amazing sets of nobles. Um, I have had a chance to work with some of the most amazing heralds, young and old. I have had a chance to I've had a chance to talk with people at a level I couldn't have before because it's one thing to abstractly talk about how to herald in the royal presence or at, under a royal court or with a baronial court. It's another thing to sit down with someone and before you say anything you both know yeah we've been there. That's just a whole different level of conversation. It's a whole different level of information you're changing. Um, that's <laughs> it's its own adventure. When I started this journey, I wasn't looking to become a local herald. I was just a local member new to this group. I had My wife and I hadn't been here a year yet. And when the opening came up, um, a couple of very good friends of mine contacted me and said, we want you to put in. Okay. <laughs> and the rest is history. I know most of the time when I do these videos, it's I break down a concept and we talk about uh, you know how it applies to you and all that, and, and that's not this video. I just wanted to take a minute to share with you my thoughts and feelings after two years as a local herald. And I want you to understand that when you're done with an office, I hope it is exhilarating and energizing and fun and educational, but you are also absolutely allowed to feel burned out and tired and, and maybe a little frustrated. These are all valid and they can all coexist, and that's perfectly okay. There is nothing wrong with saying, okay, I'm done for right now, I need a break, because that's exactly what I'm doing. As soon as I turn this over, as soon as I hand over all the stuff, I'm still going to stay in touch with everyone. I'm not going to stop going to meetings. I'm not going to stop doing anything that I normally did. But no more paperwork, no more reports, no more emails, no more getting hauled into 
conversations. Um, as much as I love the high level conversations with the nobles, I, I need a break. I'm going to go spend some insane amounts of time in my shop and work on ANS stuff and just goof off in some cases. So that's it's all allowed. It's all encouraged some, a lot of the times. What's your experience? What's your story? Tell me. If you finish an office, you got something uh, something you want to share, something you want to talk about, I'd love to hear about it. Drop it, drop it down below. But until then, I'll see you at the next event. Goodbye, and God bless.